Hey Cancers, welcome to May 2018. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today, so I'm going to jump right in. As of April 29th, I know I mentioned this in the last video, but as of April 29th, you have that full moon in Scorpio. And personally, I'm pumped for it. <laughs> you guys will be affected by it for sure um, because your Cancers, you guys are very connected to the lunar phases, something else I mentioned in the last video, um, but also because it's a fellow water sign. So you guys automatically are going to be impacted by this full moon in Scorpio on April 29th. It's bringing up a lot of deep rooted issues, a lot of crap that we just push down there and, you know, and say, I'm not dealing with that. It's coming up and it needs to be cleared because that's how things fester, right? So let it flow let it come out. There's probably going to be a lot of intuitive understandings and eureka moments where you're like, wow, maybe that's why I'm like this, or maybe that's why this happened. Um, a lot of things that we maybe suppressed in childhood as well, or in a past life could be brought up now and be cleared. And when I say cleared, it's as simple as that. It's just ownership. It's just acknowledging it, being like, hey, yeah, that did happen to me. Um, I'm not going to deny it anymore. I'm going to own it. And when we own it, it no longer owns us. So it's, <laughs> it takes a level of responsibility and a level of maturity, but once you do it, you're free. So I wish you all the luck, Cancers. Um, I'm looking forward to it. The card that just beautifully popped out was the Font card, which is all about that spiritual knowledge, that spiritual teacher that comes in and changes everything around. And it's something that you guys are manifesting into your lives because I think for too long, um, especially emotionally, you've denied your intuition. I think for too long you've said, nope, not going to listen to it. You kind of needed that other person to, to come in and say, no, you're right, <laughs> you know, and I think it's getting to a point now where that spiritual teacher is yourselves, is that person, aka you, to really look at yourself and say, my intuition has been right in the past, my, intu my intuition has always been on point, I'm just going to start believing in it and following it, so that's the card that's coming out for you guys for May 2018, what else is going on? Mercury enters Taurus on the 13th. So that's going to be really nice when it comes to communication. It's going to be a lot more grounded, a lot more stable, which is way better than the Aries energy of kind of just shooting shooting your mouth off like, and other people shooting their mouths off. May 15th is a new moon in Taurus. So that new moon is all about building new message. So the new moon, a message is going to come in that's going to be very, very positive. So look around May 15th for a new message that comes in that's incredibly positive, that's really going to put you on uh, a positive spin, that's really going to lead you to something incredible, and you created it, you manifested it, you guys are really manifesting hardcore this month, for sure, so own that energy, recognize that the message that comes in is going to be positive, so don't sit there and be like, nothing positive has ever come in for me, like I doubt it, no, something that comes in around May 15th is going to be positive, tell yourself that, every single day until May 15th, and then May 15th, <laughs> send me an email, be like, you're right, <laughs> something positive came in, because you guys are manifesting it, it's, it's still in the works, it's still in the works, and it can be very, very incredible, very positive, if you just keep that energy up, and tell yourself every single day that it is positive, if it comes in and it doesn't seem positive at first, recognize that there's an under layer, underlying positivity there, that you just need to search for, okay? What else is going on? May 19th, Venus enters Cancer, so that'll be really nice. Do something good for yourselves. Go get your hair done. Go buy that outfit that you want. Do something good, and when you feel good, you're going to really be putting out a lot of positive energy as well. Um, and look, see, it's on the bottom again. I, you just watched me shuffle. Do something good for yourself around May 19th. Venus enters Cancer, so you're going to really want to kind of uh, get more focused on how you're looking, how you're feeling, uh, especially with the spring energy coming in. So by doing that, you're going to be manifesting opportunities for growth. You're going to be manifesting opportunities for uh, giving as well. So just, just do something good for yourselves. Fill your cup back up, and then you can really 
uh, take advantage of that Venus in Cancer energy. Let's see what else. The other major thing going on in May is on the 29th, we have a full moon in Sagittarius. So just like I mentioned, the full moon is all about release. It's all about um, letting go of those things that are no longer serving us. And it's also um, about seeing things come to fruition that we manifested six months ago with the new moon in Sagittarius. Okay, so around, yeah, that'd be December, right? So uh, in December, what you were thinking about around the new moon in Sagittarius, what you were bringing into your awareness, what you're focusing on, you're now going to start to see that coming to play, coming into your life. Okay, so have fun. <laughs> okay, so let's see. May 2018. Cancers. What do the Cancers need to know? May 2018. Soulmate. That's what you guys need to know. Soulmate. <laughs> Let's see if another card pops out. Kind of help with that. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, so what your subconscious wants you to know right off the bat, Cancer, is you're your own spiritual teacher. You have all the information that you need in order to make positive changes in your life. And that's where you're really going to start to see this month where it's like, holy crap. Like, you'll see it small first where it's like, I was just thinking about that song and now it's on the radio. Or I was thinking about that and now it's coming true. Or I had a dream about that and now it's happening. Things like that, little messages like that are going to come in that are reminding you every single time that you're the creator of your world. So you don't need a guru. You don't need a spiritual teacher. You are your spiritual teacher just by listening to your intuition and by tapping in. And when I say tapping in, it's just by honoring it, by saying, okay, I'm going, I'm going to listen. You know, if I have an intuitive thought that says, take this way home, I'm going to take this way home. Even though it deviates from my original route, I'm going to take this way home and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to check the news and I'm going to see why my intuition was saying, take this other route home. Okay. With that knowledge, you're going to get a message around May 15th that brings in a lot of positivity. You're going to get some positive news coming in. With that, you're going to start to really manifest and put out some way to give back to your family and friends and to yourself. And then soulmate. <laughs> soulmate just kind of popped out of nowhere on its own. So I'm curious as to what soulmate is trying to say. If you guys know who your soulmate is, um, it could just be filling up your cup in order to give back to your soulmate to really build something incredible there. Um, I'm seeing a needle. So I'm seeing like maybe this is a month where, you know, like I'm th when I think of a needle, I think of a tattoo. And when I think of a tattoo, I think of like that that's for life like that never goes away like that's that's there for good so maybe that's what's going on um you know getting more permanent when it comes to your soulmate based on this message that comes in around may 15th based on you honoring your intuition and based on what you're putting out into the universe okay the theme of this reading cancer is your strength focusing on your strength your emotional empowerment, your power, your your um, financial empowerment as well. This Knight of Cups, this young water type sign, so a young sensitive type person. Um, somebody who, I want to say jumping jacks. I don't know why, jumping jacks. So somebody who's, who's trying to find their rhythm. When I think about jumping jacks, sometimes it can be really hard, especially as a kid, Remember with jumping jacks, trying to do the arms and the legs, and it's always just all messed up. <laughs> so this younger person who's really just trying to find their rhythm. Uh, so strength when it comes to your emotional happiness and well-being, when it comes to your financial security um, and your financial maturity. Also, this Knight of Cups has something to do with it when it comes to your thoughts. This Knight of Cups is really in your thoughts a lot because you want to move on with your power Create some huge shifts so that you can manifest more of your intuition, more of your intuition, which will bring in huge security, huge financial rewards, but also a lot of changes and a lot of alone time. 
might not be fun at first, but it's a sacrifice that you need to make in order to really create the world that you want with the partner that you're meant to be with, okay? And go through some major, major transformations. So, could be letting go of that soulmate, which is fine. Uh, soulmates come into our lives in order to put our, our, our souls back on path doesn't mean that they're here to stay. A lot of the times soulmates come in just to kind of get us, get our bearings and then they'll leave and then a new soulmate comes in or a twin flame, even better, a twin flame comes in. But this is what's going on. Could be that, you know, soulmate, you're kind of torn between your obligation to this Knight of Cups and your soulmate as well. And that's where you're getting kind of feeling very overwhelmed when it comes to your power and your security because you're feeling like in your thoughts that you have to move on, you have to walk away, you have to create that shift um, in order to honor your intuition, which will in turn be a very positive thing, but it's going to create some very profound changes, um, very profound changes that will kind of make you feel very lonely, uh, but it will be, it will be positive in the end, just kind of, it's not going to be fun, but make the sacrifice so that when that full moon in Scorpio, when that full moon in Sagittarius comes in, you can really release some things that are no longer serving you, especially when it comes to your beliefs, uh, especially beliefs surrounding, you know, lack of movement in a relationship. When you think about a Sagittarius, I don't know many Sagittariuses that are in relationships because they're they're kind of hard to pin down, depending on what other signs they have in their, in their chart, of course, but they're kind of hard to pin down because they're they're always on the move and it's hard to pin down a Sagittarius it unless you're also one it can understand that movement so that's the full moon of Sagittarius energy that's coming up on May 29th which is kind of really going to make you question this partnership and whether or not it's what you actually need okay cancer so when it comes to this partnership you don't really know what's going on you're kind of at a standstill you're kind of just sitting there being like <sighs> Because there's been such an intense past between the two of you. There's been such an intense past. And it's like I'm thinking of being in a cell block and you're just ticking off the days one by one. Like that's how long you guys have been together where you're looking at, you have to like literally count. You have to keep up with the days of how long you guys have been together and how long you guys have been going through this. And it's like... The positivity and the optimism is wearing very, very thin because it's so staggered. It's so scattered. It's like, which path are we taking? I'm optimistic about either one, but this optimism isn't going to last forever. I know that we've really built a lot together. We've had a rocky past together. There was a point where this person really gave you breath, really gave you life. And it's getting to a point now where it's like, you feel like you're on a deserted island alone anyways. So what are you really doing? It's time to kind of split hairs and really question what's going on. That is so good. Okay, the obstacle and the aid to this relationship and not knowing where it's going, the obstacle and the aid is work. <laughs> so focused on work working hard, working on your power, working on your finances, working on your security. Money is definitely a huge factor when it comes to where this relationship is going. Money, unfortunately. You know, I just read this quote the other day. First of all, I'm the type of person that when I see quotes on Instagram or Facebook, I take those as notes from the universe because I know how fast those feeds um, go through. So the fact that I'm looking at it at that exact time is always, I think, as some sort of message, especially when it resonates with me. It's one thing I was reading. It said couples who argue about money have like a way less chance of survival. And it, and it had like the, the percentage of how often you fight about money. If you fight about money, like over 54% of the time, you have like no chance, virtually no chance of survival as opposed to couples who look at the money situation if there is a money issue and tackle it together instead of it being a separating force. Personally, like my dad's going through a separation right now and it's over money and I'm just like, 
really? <laughs> like, to me, that just seems, I understand it. I totally get it. And I've been there when it comes to finances, especially financial lulls, where it's like, what are we going to do? But to have that as a reason to give up on love, especially for a cancer, you guys hold on. It could be the other party. It could be that you just, you know, don't want to fight about it anymore. There is a way to change it. There is absolutely a way to change it. And that is just positive affirmations every single day. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. I'm, an, I'm abundant. And like I said, doing something nice for yourself, filling your cup back up, feeling abundant, um, thinking about yourself as, as if you're a vortex of abundance. Uh, one, what was I reading where it was such an incredible uh, tool where you think about yourself in front of a large body of water, like a huge, like get, get relaxed and take a few deep breaths and think about yourself standing in front of a huge body of water. And inside this body of water is all of the abundance, all of the riches, all of whatever you want in this huge body of water. It never ends. And you open yourself up, envision yourself opening yourself up like a funnel and all of this abundance coming in and funneling down into you. So that's what you picture. And then you also start to see that there's people along the beach as well. And they're doing the same thing. But it doesn't matter because there's so much of it. It never ends. They can't take what you want. They can't take enough of it. They can't take it all. There's always going to be more than enough. Doing that visualization every single day will create a huge shift because there will be no more competition. There'll be no more feeling feelings of lack. You'll always be convincing yourself that you are like a magnet. You're like a vortex pulling this positive stuff in, pulling in this abundance and this wealth and prosperity. It works. It definitely works. Okay. Doing it every day adds more power and really believing it. You got to feel it too. You got to definitely feel it in your heart where it's like, whole. Oh, I can have it all. <laughs> like it, it feels awkward at first, but then after it's like, once you realize it, it's like, wow. It's like, wow. So all you have to do is do that on your, on your side. Like it, like, especially for me, I find it hard because, um, I'm married to a uh, Virgo moon, uh, Virgo rising in the second house. So when he's got money issues and here I am being like, I'm a money magnet. And he's like, we're late on rent, you know, things like that, where I'm just like, you're uh, such a bummer <laughs> when it comes to money. It can be difficult to kind of work with, with the energies when people are too realist and you're trying to manifest something that seems a little out there, but just going with it and saying, I'm doing it. I'm a money magnet. I'm a vortex for abundance. You'll start to see the changes and then your partner will start to see the changes and it'll just be positive in the end. I, I do promise you that. Because to have money and work and just focus on work as a reason why you don't know where your relationship, especially your relationship that you put so much time and energy into, you don't know where it's going because of money is just, that's too heartbreaking. That is way too heartbreaking. That should never be. And it, it, it usually is. You know, think about people when they get divorced. It gets to a point where all they're doing is, is fighting over money. And it's like, come on. <laughs> subconsciously emotionally you're doing very well emotionally doing very very well but you're thinking some new thoughts here new thoughts have come in new thoughts have definitely come in that you're you're struggling with you're trying to you're trying to get a firm grasp on them because of that cancer energy where it is kind of hard to change uh your mind because you guys are um the crab like i was actually just reading more about cancer and I thought that that was really interesting. I was reading about moon and cancer, actually, because I have a lot of people around me with their moon and cancer. And it was saying that their intuition works best when it comes to their family and friends, their home and family. Um, but they can't fully grasp their own intuition. It very, it very much scares them. Um, so I think that with this new spiritual guidance that you're learning about yourself and how much of a spiritual influence and spiritual teacher you are to yourselves and how incredible your intuition actually is, that's a new thought that's going to be kind of hard to, to grab hold of because 
you're more intuitive about what other people, especially the people that you care about, should be doing. You're very smart when it comes to that, like a whip where it's where it's very easy. But to apply that to yourself, oh sorry, drama. <laughs> to apply that to yourself, um, it's going to be kind of a hard thing to to handle. But it'll come. It'll definitely come. Yeah, you took a risk recently as well. You right now, positivity, definitely positive, definitely feeling good, definitely feeling good, but still this relationship, don't know where it's going. Although you are positive about it. Family and friends, there's a queen of pentacles here. There's somebody here that is going to give you some advice. So they're in your family slash friend circle, frog, froggy eyes, something related to a frog. So either, you know, it could be could be many things. So frog could just be somebody who has bug eyes, you know, when they kind of have like these froggy eyes. Could have froggy eyes when they're drinking. I had a friend that like when she would hit a threshold of, of alcohol, she just, her eyes would go all wonky. Um, could also be somebody that you feel like you constantly have, is always jumping around from topic to topic, like, you know, playing a leapfrog constantly, or somebody who's constantly leaping over others to get what they want. Um, what else could a frog symbolize? Green. So either somebody who needs more unconditional love or who has a, a blocked uh, chakra, somebody who could be green with envy, like lime green jello. Um, what else could this could this frog symbolize? I'm seeing like something with the tongue as well. When you think about a frog with how they kind of they spit their words and it, it really kind of it really hits you the way that they talk. So this is somebody in your family slash friends circle that it's it's been cooking for a long time. It's definitely been cooking for a long time and it is time to just talk about it. It's definitely time to just talk about it because they have the information that you need when it comes to this relationship and which steps you should be taking because they've been there before. So it is getting to a point where you should just ask them about it and be like, I need your advice. I need your help on this. Hope and fear is all the opportunities that you guys have right now. Hope for it, but you fear it. So you want it, but you're afraid of it because what, what more, what's more? Uh, and like I said, because you've been so focused on work, so focused on building yourself up and that's been the obstacle to this relationship and, and where this relationship is going to actually stop and focus on the fact that you have a lot more opportunities for growth besides just this one it is pretty scary. It's pretty scary, but it is time to recognize that it doesn't always have to be the one path. It doesn't have to be the one, the one path. Like I said, you're kind of, there's two different ways to go at this point and not doing anything and not going anywhere is one of those ways. You know, that's a third option. So choose so that you have some control. So first step, this is what's going to happen, Cancer. You're going to really recognize these new thoughts that came in. That's going to make you realize that something is definitely missing with your home and family. Something is missing there. And that's going to force you to go back in time. You're going to kind of go backwards and, and put a lot of energy on the past and what you could have done. But don't do that. Don't do it. Go forward. Turn yourself around. It's going to feel very natural to go backwards. That's what cancers do. You know, actually they move sideways, right? When when their enemy is, is close or when those feelings are coming up, they, they shuffle sideways. Embrace it. Face your fears. Go head first and really start to recognize that this relationship, it can't be it can't be solely based on this financial whatever. If it's a financial hardship, if it's too much money, if, well, too much money. Whatever it is when it comes to your work, when it comes to money, when it comes to power, when it comes to security, get rid of it when it comes to this relationship because there's so much more to acknowledge in this relationship besides just that aspect, okay? And I know in the past, it might have seemed like this, but this new frame of mind that you're coming in to with your intuition and with your spirituality, that is going to make you realize that there actually is something emotionally missing from the relationship. And the more you keep confusing that emotional void with a financial slash security void, that's the issue here. That's totally the issue. But you guys are really positive. You guys are, are doing really well in that aspect. Like I said, ask the Queen of Pentacles for help because 
this person has their finances figured out. So this person, when it comes to relationships, they're in a relationship that finances don't hinder the relationship. And are they still happy? You know, really look at their relationship without that financial issue. That's one thing that I've noticed just like two days ago. I'm like, I'm thinking about the fact that as a Capricorn rising growing up, I, I was like, okay, well, as long as I'm successful, I'll be happy. And I'm looking around. I'm like, the people who are successful around me are the most depressed people that I know. And that's because they convinced themselves like I did that if they have success, they'll be happy. But then they got the success before they worked on the happiness and they're there and they're even more miserable because they're like, this was supposed to make me happy. So talking to that queen of pentacles will make you realize that the money aspect when it comes to this relationship is not all that's missing. There's still an emotional aspect as well. And I think that new frame of mind, that message that comes in, like I said, although you may not think it's positive at first, it actually is very positive because it's going to really allow you to dig deep and understand things on a completely different level. It's going to turn you into that intuitive cancer that you've been dying to become. So as always, if you need more guidance, please send me an email for a personalized reading. I include full astrology and numerology along with the tarot to get a full uh, picture, a full view of what's going on. Love you guys so much, and I will see you in June. Bye, Cancers.